big up. Oh yeah, that's what I was thinking about. I was gonna say. So I was watching um Riz episode of End of Sentence, aka 1090 Jake, where he basically goes on a bit of an expose, exposing the one and only Boston Richie, somebody I've only been familiar with the last few months, I think, or so, mostly because of his really, really good feature record that he has with um sort of the record that he has featuring future that's been you know on my playlist for a while now i forgot the name of it now it escapes me but most of you would know what i'm talking about if you've kind of seen it but there's this really great track that he's got in there that's kind of blown him up and took him to astronomical levels of success in a very short space of time well anyway i guess off the back of that um one of kodak black's artists decided to get in a bit of a spat of him online to the point where he revealed some details about him allegedly snitching on a few cases and whatnot and essentially kind of you know calling into question whatever image that he had of being a thorough dude and being a gangster and whatnot going forward end of sentence 1090 jake i do recommend checking out his youtube channel he's got a video on it at the moment um i've got it here on the screen it is titled the story of boston Ritchie witnessing free um murder cases and it's available on his channel called end of sentence definitely go check it out and one of the interesting things about it that got me thinking, it was kind of like on the same sort of tip of what's been happening with flipping Young Fug and his case and all these people involved in YSL, you know, co-founders, hitmen, foot soldiers, essentially turning on him and making it impossible, impossible to see any other outcome apart from getting football numbers in terms of jail term or life or something crazy like that i can see that happening i can't see any scenario where that guy walks out of prison which is really really sad to see or walks out of jail it's really, really sad but it also just got me thinking about how horrible it must be to be a gangster in this modern age that we live in because for some reason i know snitch has been happening for a long time but obviously it was way more of a taboo back in the day because most of those guys you know abided by a code and lived by a live by live by a certain street code abided by you know some sort of lifestyle whatever it may be but essentially the idea behind it was that you never spoke to police in any way shape or form and there was always this acceptance that this life of crime that you were engaged in although the successes can be immediate the money can be extravagant and crazy right who wouldn't want to be making 10 million per day you know like flipping pablo escobar his height and whatnot and all those dudes you watch those documentaries and those tv series narcos and whatnot netflix and especially if you're somebody that may have done drugs in the past or maybe it's somebody that's obsessed with clipping um organized crime the same people are obsessed with other sorts of like true crime stuff like serial killers and whatnot it's co it's kind of like makes sense in your head to sort of like fantasize about a world or a scenario where you would have maybe been the kingpin or the capo of a particular sort of organized crime syndicate and what you would have done in whatever case it may be right you can always have that especially if you're somebody that maybe has sold the, the cut the odd couple of pill the odd couple of gram here on there it can be natural to kind of have this idea that somehow now you are also Pablo Escobar and now you are going to be removing weight and flipping work but quickly, if you're somebody that's sensible, you start to, you know, go through all the cons quickly after the pros and you start to realize that just the ability to, for law enforcement to take away your freedom is already enough of a deterrent for you not to kind of go down that path for the most part. That's mostly, most of the reason why maybe I didn't maybe um, succumb to the streets as some of my friends have done. You know, some of them have kind of been in prison for many, many years. Some of them victims of stuff. Some of them are the perpetrators of things. And it's kind of sad to see, but for the most part i feel like you would be safe to assume that if you do decide to commit your life to a life of crime you should go through the gamut of pros and cons and accept that a part of the consequences of leading that sort of life is that you may be arrested you may be killed or you may be imprisoned and part of being arrested and imprisoned is that you may spend a considerable amount of your years on this planet living in a confined space it's just what it is if you commit to that sort of lifestyle but for whatever reason, this newer generation of people, of kids or gang members in general, they don't seem to be willing to accept that side of the lifestyle that they willingly chose for themselves. Some of them, they didn't willingly choose it because if you're born in a you know, poverty-stricken neighborhood, sometimes gangs aren't as serious as people make them out to be. They're just a means for local kids to sort of band around and kind of make each other feel better, you know, kind of to sort of, you know, contrast from the dire circumstances they're kind of living in or to you know, afford them some level of um 
protection on the streets especially to living again in a place that's maybe torn between two different neighborhoods it can just be something simple as that so maybe it's something that you don't willingly go into it's something kind of based on where you're kind of born into and you didn't pick your parents you didn't pick where you live in the beginning and you kind of have to kind of suck it up but i feel like if you decide to take the next step and start to do work you have to decide you have to accept i would imagine part of the consequences is that you might get arrested you may end up doing a long time in prison and you also have to accept that part of the lifestyle of a gangster is like don't ever talk to law enforcement it's always no comment it's always i need my lawyer and that's it there are no you know sharing of information there's no providing information that kind of goes towards contributing to somebody's arrest and them kind of you know being without their family and whatnot, that's not how you do it but and for me even i even knew again not being a gang or anything i even knew it goes to a point of like even if you were beefing with somebody in a rival gang and you knew information about them that could get them nicked and put in prison, you wouldn't do that. You'd still get them back on the streets. You wouldn't try and get them back through using the law enforcement as a proxy. You just wait for them to get back on road. If, if, if they wronged you, for instance, you wouldn't think just them going to prison was enough. You'd let them come out. And then when they come out, you'd get them. Like, you know, Al Paul Martinez is a good example. Um, he, you know, murdered a bunch of guys when he was out. He came out. He tried to flaunt and flex and act like he didn't care. And sooner rather than later, he's, you know, he ended up getting murked himself in his own car. Clearly, that was, I would imagine, imagine somebody you know a victim or a family member tied to people that he may have killed in the past who said this can never lie until his body drops also so it's kind of what you have to accept but for some reason again like i said these new generation of kids don't seem to be willing to accept the prison part of it you look at the whole you know slug slime light thing going on at the moment everyone's taking plea deals everyone is essentially is um contributing to young folk going to prison for a very very long time they all willingly you know got initiated into this gang they were initially they were willingly went into it wanting to be a gang member and saying slat and slime life and doing the whole sniffing thing right they all wanted to be a part of that when it was cool and obviously going to ride outs and whatnot and in a moment it becomes an issue where your freedom is at stake they suddenly all want to become sensible and make the smart choice or make the uh grown-up decision to kind of denounce a life of crime suddenly in that moment and go back to being a regular civilian but anyway, regardless go back to this boston Richie case boston richie case sorry um he's obviously been um highlighted out here tenet jake has done a really good video and pointing out some of the things that he may have may not have done in terms of contributing to people's murders and whatnot i'm going to play a clip, small clip of it and then going to round it off as we continue but this is a good documentary i recommend check out all clip video clips that he does i recommend check it out the affidavit clearly states Boston Richie told police he told his co-defendants the car was stolen a total of three times. Because of this, all three teens were arrested and charged with GTA because they knowingly got into a stolen vehicle. Now Boston Richie's team would say he was only 16 at the time and the charges got dropped for the other two teens, but in my opinion, that doesn't matter. The two other teens refused to make statements to police while Boston Richie agreed to make a statement, and his statement got them arrested. So in total, Boston Richie has conducted two separate interviews with police, got his own cousin and another teen arrested, and gave a sworn statement in a murder case where the alleged shooter was sentenced to prison. And <laughs> I don't know, man. I just, we, I think we just live in a real pick and choose era. Maybe it's not a generation thing, maybe it's just an era. I think of the Nippo baby discourse there's a lack of acknowledgement on the nipper baby side that just because you've been born into this successful family that's afforded you opportunities to get into the industry uh, you know that maybe regular people don't have or maybe access to certain people even if even if you are really talented there are some people that are always going to question or call into question your um your standing your work they're not going to rate you as a person they're just going to be people that aren't really going to take too well to you being in that space in any way, shape or form. It just is what it is. It's unfortunate, but it just is what it is. But for whatever reason, the Nipper Baby discourse, they don't seem to accept that reality, that that is just part of the sort of burden of being born with a name like, you know, Pitt as being your last name or Joe Lee. So, yeah, whatever it may be, right? They don't, they don't really want to accept that. They just want to pick and choose. Like, I want to be my own person, but I also want to have the access to this network of people that i wouldn't have had if my dad wasn't a successful director movie star or whatever but i also don't want you to judge me based on the access that i have it's like no like 
this is just all that comes with it. Same that goes with gang life. If you want to live this fast life, fast money lifestyle, you have to ex- accept that there is a level of risk at the end of it that could contribute to you spending a considerable amount of time in prison. And part of the fast life, fast money lifestyle is that when you do get questioned by the police, they just never speak. You just kind of, you know, keep it stum, and they don't. And they suddenly then decide to be regular civilians and then decide you know they spend a lot of time talking about how lame and dorky it is to be a regular civilian and how they're so much cooler and i think many people like myself regular civilians we look at them and think yeah they're way cooler and way harder than we are but really are they because it's easy i think to hit an enemy because you made them out to be an enemy you turn them into a bit of a boogeyman a bogeyman so a boogeyman what have how you pronounce that word how can i say i said it three times three different ways or you just continue it's i think not that easy to get vengeful or get angry to the point where you're going to do a ride out it might be scary and hard to do the do it the first time but i think after you've done it a few times but the real hard part of it is being solid being loyal not you know betraying your flipping fellow gang members and whatnot and really abiding by that code that that code of silence so that's what is the real hard part of it because who really wants to be in prison for any amount of time even if it's two weeks do you remember the height of COVID? Was it COVID? When was it? Maybe it was COVID or pandemic times. And people were going around looting and whatnot. In the UK, for some reason, I guess to deter people from going out and looting again, the police were throwing out some really harsh sentences out when people would loot. And I think the famous story was like, you know, some people went out there and tried to steal flipping bottles of water from shops and got hit with like two week prison sentences, right? And in the UK, we don't have jails like you have in the United States. Um, We have prison. So if you commit a crime, we have to spend some time in, you know, confinement or whatever it may be you have to go to prison there is no jail so that's obviously horrible so if you do a parking ticket i'm pretty sure that's how it works again i've never been in prison but i'm pretty sure that's how it works there's no no jail here in the uk so imagine robbing a store and getting convicted for shoplifting and then you get flipping thrown in prison with legit murderers with legit diddlers with legit essayers and r words and stuff it's mad isn't it but i remember that happening and that being a big thing and you know it's one thing for some regular civilian who's just you know decided on a whim to go and join in a bit of flipping social unrest and try and fight the flipping bureaucracy red tape and government restrictions by stealing a kinder boy on a bottle of water that's one thing and then deciding to snitch because you're facing six months in prison for it but if you're a legit gang member and you decided to do ride outs and you decided to commit to this life of crime and now at the end where you're gonna face some real hard time you suddenly want to come into a civilian like that's not cool man especially for somebody like a young thug who's so beloved and stuff i just feel like that's such a it's such a sad way for him to kind of go out in that respect that he's basically being betrayed by the people he maybe trusted the most and who he thought maybe more of outside of the industry. The probably people he f- he probably thought he could really depend on. And now at the moment of need, they're all kind of kicking him essentially and sort of con- condemning him to a life behind bars for a very long time. Now, I don't see him getting out in a for it, f- ever really, considering what they're kind of accusing him of. Um, many hits, many actual murders, um, you know actual kingpin stuff not like he was pretending and larping to be the head hot honcho he is legitimately was the head from what we can see so far i don't know i feel sad for the guy man but um hopefully it doesn't involve anyone innocent because if it does then you know can't feel too sad for him but from what i can see it's just gang stuff and gang members deciding to get cold feet and suddenly get conscious when their freedom is at risk when really you should be thinking about it all along before you join the gang in the first place isn't it mate but hey who am i to say who am i to say